Now then, lawyers, accountants and other professionals can no longer ignore the criminal activities of their clients. This is the message, anyway, from the Home Office, with the announcement that workers can no longer adopt a no-questions-asked approach to their clients' dealings. Well, we'll hear from uh, a lawyer in just a second. Before that, though, let's talk to Karen Bradley, who's the Minister for Organised Crime. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Tell us a bit more about these changes. Well, what we're doing is uh, increasing the focus for the police and prosecution uh, agencies so that they can make sure that they can crack those organised crime gangs and that anybody who is uh, currently helping an organised crime gang but uses the defence of, I didn't know what I was transporting, I didn't know what the money was for, I didn't know what I was doing, Uh, they can currently uh, uh, not be prosecuted or they can find themselves not guilty of conspiracy. We want to close that loophole. Who specifically is it targeting? It's targeting uh, anybody who is helping an organised crime gang. We've got we've got about thirty six thousand uh, people in this country who we believe are organ- involved in organised crime, and some of those people, some of them are the Mr. Bigs, those people at the top of the ladder who are uh, not getting their hands dirty, but they are pro- benefiting and profiting from the crimes, and others are the the people at the bottom who are the fixers that make it happen, the the van drivers, the the lawyer, the accountant, the person who helps that organised crime gang with its activities, but at the moment gets away scot-free. Do you equate this with any member of the public who thinks a crime is being committed, um, being encouraged, more than encouraged, to make a call about it and, and, and to do something about it? Because it's slightly different, isn't it, when it comes to client-lawyer relationships? Well, this is about people who know or would have reasonable cause to know that the act people they are helping and working for are involved in organised crime. So it's not just a member of the public, it's people who are really actively involved in this but are currently uh, not uh, being found guilty under the conspiracy charge and we want to, uh, to, to make sure that we have the police have a charge that they can levy on these individuals and that prosecutors can make a successful prosecution and, and maximum penalty of five years in jail. In- including lawyers, including solicitors. Including anybody who is involved in helping organise criminals. But if the help they're offering is to represent them, um, if they're charged with anything or face any legal difficulty, um, isn't that slightly different than if they're helping them drive away from a theft? Sorry, uh, the point is that they are helping the individual to carry out their criminal activities. By not reporting it. But but not people who are helping that individual to carry out criminal activities should be worried about this offence. Some solicitors, and we'll hear from one in a second, say that this could cause dilemmas for for them representing criminals and, and have an impact on a fair trial. This is not about fair trials at all. It is about people who are allowing and enabling other individuals to carry out crimes. P- crimes that any man and woman on the street would think are and know are wrong, but at the moment we cannot prosecute those individuals. OK, many thanks. Karen Bradley, Minister for Organised Crime. Listening to her was uh, Joseph Cotry monson who's the director of the National Law Firm, Mary Monson Solicitors. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Uh, your thoughts on what she said? Well, I'm so glad... And I'm almost speechless having heard what I've just heard, but I'm so glad that towards the end we heard just a few sensible words from the minister's mouth. And that was a reference to the normal man on the street or the normal person on the street. The reality is that I and many professionals, lawyers, accountants, not corrupt lawyers, and they're corrupt lawyers for t- who for too long, as the press, in the press release I've read today from the minister, for too long have enabled these criminals to get away with all of this. The, the reality is this myth of a no questions asked associate being somehow untouchable, I would think that the average man on the street has the sense to realise is largely a fiction straight out of films like The Godfather or Carlito's Way, both of which, I have to confess, are excellent. Uh, OK, let's, let's backtrack a little. Corrupt lawyers, uh, you accept some exist? Of course, of course. But the whole way in which this press release, the whole way in which this is being sold by the minister and her department, pre-election, and perhaps that's not a coincidence... Well, significantly pre-election. Well, <laughs> let's, a year away. let's face it, UKIP have hammered the Tories in the, in the most recent election, and this is precisely the type of ill-informed and exaggerated 
non-technical and non-legal. This couldn't have been written by a lawyer. It could only have been written by a politician. But do you accept that if, a, if uh, you know, a perfectly law-abiding citizen, I'm not suggesting a corrupt lawyer for a second, or an accountant or other professionals who come into contact with someone and uh, see that or fear that they are committing a crime, um, specifically with the lawyer-client relationship in mind, what, what's the norm? Well, I, I, I think the focus here very much, you know, in a practical sense, let's forget the idiocy of the uh, way in which this has been, pres is, is the, the, this is being attempted to be presented to the, to, to the general public, who I think are a bit more discriminating than that. But I think the reality is here that the, perhaps the, 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 the better intention here is looking at, as does exist in the press release too, looking at the way in which criminal monies are transferred by accountants, by solicitors, of course as solicitors, conveyancing lawyers specifically are involved in financial transactions. Yeah. But as any lawyer will tell you, there are substantial and detailed legal frameworks with criminal penalties already in place where the, where the penalties are greater than five years, which place much more... Penalties onus. for what, though? I'm not clear on what. Penalties for... transferral for, of money. For, knowing for it to no, be criminal. Notifi suspecting, notifying, uh, notifying uh, as to uh, uh, suspicion of money laundering suspicious activity reports, the tipping off of an, of, an, of, of an investigation if you become aware of it to your own client is a criminal offence. All of this will make precisely no difference because the laws already exist. But I'm sure if you ask any government press officer, it sounds pretty good. Ha, uh, this dilemma for representing criminals and uh, potential impact on a fair trial, where is that? Yeah, I, I, I don't think that... In a specific sense, that's a real problem here. I think that probably the major source of disquiet for criminal lawyers, especially, at a period where we have been denigrated and portrayed as fat cats in the context of the single biggest cuts to legal aid and the rights of the individual to a fair trial in three generations are the major consideration. And the idea that this government has the gall to put at the outset of, of, its, of its press release for far okay. too long corrupt lawyers, it's a complete smokescreen, completely disingenuous, okay. and I think most people will find it offensive. Joseph Cotry-Monson, thank you. Uh, Director of the National Law Firm, Mary Monson Solicitors. Many thanks for joining us.